Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to the Ashes of Creation discussion round, the longest running podcast for Ashes of Creation. I hope everybody's doing great. I hope everybody's doing well. And yeah, apparently we have a lot of topics today. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. We got 15. Some of them could be merged into topics, but like like the, the, the actual topic, like actual 15 topics themselves, like I you, you could go off on side tangents on the ones that like kind of merge together. Oh, we can go off on tangents on any of these, right? No, you go off on tangents on any of them, but like, but like some of them definitely could be like linked together for 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 me at least, I I, I do see my uh, myself being able. I, I, but yeah, uh, you'll probably know about some of these uh, staggers, and there's some 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 of the merger stuff we've been talking about in the in the envious Discord. I know you've been there for some, at least some of them um, while we were playing uh, games. But uh, so we got the April live stream. Um, monthly cosmetics, we can hold off on that. Like the, the not really, uh, they haven't come out with the new months. We just talked about the other, but like the, the last guys, month. You guys want to talk about that whole event thing? Uh, sure. I mean, I don't care. You pick the topic. I don't care. Yeah, let's start off with with the fucking oh, live yeah. stream. Yeah. Oh, live stream. Sorry. So, I. I this last live stream, they they hyped it up a little bit. Like if you like, they they posted on Twitter a, a, a thing for the for the for the fact that it was. Um, they hyped it up a bit on Twitter. They hyped it a bit on, on Discord. They had a video for it. Uh, people were guessing. Like people were trying to guess what what it was for. What it was for. Uh, people guessed correctly on a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. People were trying to think, maybe maybe assuming that maybe they were going to show off combat or like some other things. People guessed correctly. It was events. Uh, it was yeah. a pretty good misdirection. Yeah, if they were hype, we we everyone's going to assume combat. Uh, well, yeah. they they'd assume a lot. Like it would be. If, All right, some... so my thing with hyping something up is that if you're going to hype it up, have something to show. Don't just talk about it. This time, <laughs> like, they, they showed off a, like a 30-second clip, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, a 15 to 30-second clip, and they just played it on loop the entire time they talked about events. And my thing, my I, so they talked about events, just to, just to put out the, put this out there. Most of the podcast was just event, most of the, yeah, most of the, not podcast, most, most of the live stream was them talking about events with a 15 to 30 second video of goblins running through a field. No, not, not fighting anything, just running towards a node. Um, On loop while they, while they, while they, while they were talking, they hyped it up. They had a little video for it. They, they had they had a little video for it and said like, "Are you ready? Are you excited for tomorrow's live stream? It's going to be quite an eventful one. E eventful being set up, spelt out like with capital E V event dash full one with wide eye with a wide eyes kind of emoji." And the little video was the misty of the like the misty effect uh thing with uh over a um a table with a bunch of stuff with a bunch of stuff over it and of all of this is like event stuff too you got you got a halloween pumpkin you got fourth of july stuff in there i don't think you have christmas stuff um you got banners and all kinds of things you, you got a whole bunch of like things and people were automatically assuming because of the word event and because they have event stuff in the video people were people were automatically assuming it's an event okay and then th that they, they didn't talk about anything new that I, I so they didn't talk about anything new event wise is, is that now, true is that true i i am almost certain 100 percent certain not even not even leaking any pi stuff that everything they have talked about has been talked about in past live streams 
and all the information we got the day of the live stream and inside the blog that followed. I'm okay with the blog that followed. My my problem is is, is with the with the live stream. The problem with the live stream is that I am almost 100% certain that none of that stuff was new, which is fine because the live streams have never been for the people that have been here for a while. And that's fine, but if you're going to hype it up, have something to like I Number this, one, don't don't hype anything up. Like even, even if it was combat, don't 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 hype. Let it up. them hype it up. That's what they do. It's like what that they have like a team of. That's like Margaret's job or their community team's job. I'm not sure who actually is supposed to do it, but like he, someone's he, job is to hype things up. Here's here's my question because I thought that in that live stream, like I did not like I watched it from beginning to end, even through the Q and A. And there was nothing in there where I'm like, okay, this is like super duper new information. But then I yeah. talked to some people that are like, oh yeah, there's bits that are super new and we didn't know that about them. I'm like, I, I... No, no. All of that's been information that we've already known. That has been talked about. I, I granted, it's been talked about in bits and pieces throughout the like four to five years we've been through. We, we've been in the Ash Creation Discord. And that was like, and like the blog post and the live stream was just like, all that information kind of compiled in, in, into into one thing, but that is not new content. That that was all information we already known, and there was nothing to show for it. Like they didn't show off like seasonal stuff. I, you didn't show off like weather effect changes inside Unreal, uh, like the weather effect changing th uh, thing. Like like you didn't show off anything. You just talk, you just like basic like that was basically a Q and A question about effects being answered. All that that was said is also basically subject to change as well. Like like nothing new was said and nothing was shown off. Do do we need to just tell the artist that there was not a lot of new stuff, and by a lot of new stuff there wasn't any new stuff? Move on. I w I'm trying. I'm trying not to go off, so I'm just. I'm going off. Okay, BCG, yeah. go off. You do your thing. I mean, yeah, you do your thing. I mean, I, I, I get that you have to, you know, make the new people happy and keep the interest for new people, you know, that come in. And at some point, I, I get that, right? That that's that's part of the whole gig. Um. But honestly, now we're at, at a point where I'm like, uh, okay, this is quite literally super freaking boring for people that have been with the community, that built the community for the past five years. And I'm, I, not, I, I'm not saying, hey, yeah, it, it, it's a bad thing to do. It's like, hey, you know, maybe for the old people, every every couple of months, you drop us something. I don't. I, I feel I, like they have. I mean, last month they dropped us the character creator. That was a huge milestone. That that was that was proving they can do something that they like claim yeah, they were going to yeah, do. Yeah, no. Sorry, that was something I assumed was just going to like be quietly kind of pushed under the rug, as like and push out because of uh, just like the amount of resources it would take to make that. Yeah, no, it didn't seem like it was something true. that was core to the game. That's true. But it was really cool to see. It just it just puts me in a position where I say, okay, so I need to be really careful if I hype myself up for anything that comes in the future. Unless it I, says something like, oh yeah, we're going to show off combat. I'm not going to assume that they show off combat or anything of that nature. No, Even then, were, you should probably like temper I think you, yourself. Yeah, I think you, Margaret yeah. said, yeah, 100% you should temper yourself. My big thing is that they, they, they hyped up them just talking about old shit. And showing off a goblin video. That was new for some people, but yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, it was kind of sad that the the they didn't really show the video they showed was kind of as you said, just cinematic. It wasn't really an actual display of systems. But I, uh, I was they don't have it. Whatever. I was one hundred percent fine with the following up bl blog post. I thought it was a nice. I think I thought it was a nice. Like <laughs> I, everything that they were they were trying to say in the video. I put into a, not, uh, put no put no blog. But it's it's basically all the content based on events put into a blog post that was that was perfectly fine my big thing is that they hyped up the the live stream i 
I don't think you can fault them for hyping. There's like, as I said, there's people's jobs who like literally type. If the, you if they're not hyping up something, but it's if like if you're gonna hype it up, have oh something to show, or at least like some, something like yeah, some, uh, preferably something new to talk about. But like the live streams aren't or for some people new. Like if you're, if you're following Twitter or if you're just follow, like you've been following the Discord or like you 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 follow any of the other social medias. Like generally, like they they talk like they talk about some things. You, nothing's ever really new in the live streams right now. I, I, the, like you said, we got the we got the character creator quite a bit. We were we were we were talking about the character creator beforehand. We kind of knew the character creator was coming. That was something to hype up. This was a weird thing to hype up. It was extremely weird to hype up in the way they did it. Um, Skylark. Um, oh, we we just talked about that, and yeah, I agree. For new people, it is interesting. For new people, it is interesting. We we are not, you know, disputing that or saying that is not the case. Like that is absolutely the case. For new people, it's interesting. Um, we at least the three of us, we're in a little bit of a like weird situation because we've been um, we've been with the community f since the start. So for us. At least for me, the majority of everything that we heard, I already heard in one way or another. Um, and that's what we're kind of like going on about that, you know, um, the, the last big thing that we got that is new to us was the, the character creator. Which was a week ago, not a no, week which ago, was, a month which was ago. The, the, the live stream beforehand. Like, Stackerson's right. We have gotten big things and like other things to talk about. This was just well, like, you've shown off other things. And this was a weird. This is just a weird podcast for me. Uh, this is a weird, weird live stream for me. Uh, why? Why was it a weird one? Well, because I, I it was just talking about uh, I, old things over a thirty second video of goblins running through a field, and you hyped it up like it was something. I, I was like it, like it, it was going to be an eventful. I, I just, just there, there's wordplay there. I get it, but. Like they've had videos for other ones. Like I, they they do the videos for like the 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 band like the like the holiday stuff like Christmas, uh, Fourth of July, um, Thanksgiving, and they even did one for Mother's Day today. I think. Well, one good yeah. thing is um, because of the live stream, I had to Google an anime. So, which anime? Uh, Goblin Slayer. Oh, you haven't seen that. Yeah, because because as soon as they one. started running, everybody was like typing Goblin Slayer, Goblin Slayer. I'm like, what the hell are you guys talking about? And then somebody wrote, it's an anime. I'm like, all right, I have to check this out. I do. It has a cheese loving lizard, man. I love it. I haven't seen it yet, so the Goblin Mask. The, uh, this is this is a side tangent on the fucking actual goblins in the video, but the Goblin Chieftain or the Goblin Shaman that's in the video. Inside Ash Creation, goblins don't have noses, but his mask has this gigantic big nose. You, you would normally see on a goblin, uh, like inside other media sources of media, like fantasy things, would make sense for a goblin. They, usually they have like gigantic, like, like big honkers. But, um... Big honkers! But, uh... In Ash Creation, they don't have that. So, like, supposedly you could probably guess that maybe like, like that, that's... A, a symbol of their god or something like that like that but like it, it's just weird that the goblin chieftain has a mask that has a gigantic big nose and he's got the he's got like that's the fins on the side too uh he about the grass things that are made like like just more decorative to it you know what like, i would like to see what that would make it like more interesting to uh to me um that uh that cutscene or that animation from perspective of in-game graphics from ultra to low. How would that look with different graphical settings? That would be interesting. I think if you're gonna talk about events and like the how the weather affects the world and like all kinds of stuff, like they did do, talk I Show all like you've shown off how you you've talked about how you want weather to affect the PRI and stuff like that. You've shown off how how weather how how the different seasons can affect uh, mounts and stuff like that with with the with the with the with the shell the not shell the ancients the uh, timeless terrapin uh, mount. 
you, you you've shown off like you've tried to show off the day night cycle you have different maps show off the different weather effects being able to affect i show it off in unreal 4 maybe just like a test environment that that you have that the weather effects are able to change the the actual map like snowing raining stuff like that uh you mean like the tech that puts like snow on the ground or makes the ground all wet looking yeah like i actually I like that's old though like no we've well, had that for like almost 10 years now We've had that kind of tech for 10 years now, but that we haven't seen it inside Ash. So you, we've seen snow maps, we've seen rainy maps, but we haven't seen like like the day night cycle changes like they, they were sure they've been showing off. We haven't seen them go through the day night cycle change and we haven't seen it for Unreal 5. Uh them go through Unreal 5, especially with Unreal 5, going through Unreal 5 showing off different environmental changes. Which is what the part part of what they were talking about. It's also it also feels like a weird topic to talk about because there was no event going on, really, to talk uh, to talk about. I, I, this seems like a topic you would talk about during one of the like the like the the like like the like Christmas or Halloween or something like that. Yeah. What I have found, I what I found a little bit. I feel like uh, we're like. Now here, here's why I like. I don't know if you want to call it the Philippines or I don't know. Like I said, it wasn't that interesting of a live stream to me. But what made it more interesting to me is because they were talking about also cause and effect of, you know, what's going on. And um, I would see them recreate like a scenario where it's like, oh, yeah, okay, player, do this. This is how the world reacts. And then, you know, the goblins attack, something like that. Because even though Stephen talking, explaining it, all we're seeing is a, is a group of goblins running towards a node. That's completely like for me. It's completely out of context. It it doesn't really fill the the requirements to be a fitting cutscene for that topic. It could have been anything. Well, I mean, he kind of explained it during it, though. Yeah. Was, uh, do we lose? Look, you okay? Um, I think we lost. Talking him. about how uh, like goblins might show up, and if you watch Goblin Slayer, you would understand the scenario perfectly. I don't. I mean, I guess I have to watch it now. All right. yeah. uh, warning yeah. on episode one. It kind of sells the premise in a very violent way. Don't, don't spoil it. If I, if I agree on watching an anime, don't spoil it for me. Okay. Um, I'm just saying episode one is very the, violent. The, the thing that I also found interesting is that they kind of stated that they might take um, some aspects of real life holidays and transfer them into um into to ashes which i do like a lot because i don't care about christmas i don't care about easter i don't care about i don't know what any other holiday um but the one thing i always look forward to in any mmorpg is, is halloween halloween exactly um world of warcraft does it really well guild wars 2 does it really really well um so i'm really really looking forward to seeing what uh, intrepid is going to come up with yeah, I mean they have a lot they could theme it around. Yeah. Um, I want to see their version of the headless Hor horseman. Oh, oh, we have lost the yokai. We lost Water. the yokai. We lost the yokai. I do apologize. I do apologize for um this, uh, but until yokai comes back, there's nothing really we can do about it. I hope he comes back. Is he gonna come <coughs> back? What did he? I just run? have a you, you can fill the spot. I don't think he's there just yet. Um, oh, he might be in bed. Yeah. Uh, Power Flash be back in, on in a sec. All right. There, there he is. Up oh, now he's Mick Stackerson. I'm just gonna switch in a second. And I am you okay? <laughs> You're missing the ears. Nah, I want to see. I mean. The, on paper, the whole event system, the whole season thing and everything um, sounds great on paper. Uh, but I'm going to get excited as soon as we see uh, proof of concept. Yeah. I, I mean, mean... That's fair, right? It's Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to see execution. I think one thing I noticed with events is, like, you also want to, like, control... One thing they say is, like, uh, there's supposed to be consequence for failing events. And I assume what would also come with this is, like events wouldn't be spammed like there are in some games 
where it's like there's always i guess i'm equating events to public events to like uh public quests and those kind of things in guild wars 2 or um warhammer online um where there's just like these world events that are always happening so it kind of like doesn't mean much all right what's up sackerson hey Faisal. <laughs> what do you mean i'm stuck with some bcg you're missing the glasses so i don't know what happened to to uh I don't know what happened. I mean, let me fix this. BCG. Quick. I told you this. I got eye surgery. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't know what happened to stack uh, to to Yokai. He said the power flash. So I hope he's all right. Um. Yeah. So, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, one of these days we gotta we gotta figure out. One of these days we gotta figure out how to do this podcast properly. I promise. One of these days we gotta figure it out somehow. Like, nah, nah. It's 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 good how it is. It I, is uh, how yeah. I see it. <laughs> yeah. Goliath, uh, Galeth, kind of pointed out that something that I agree with is yeah. it's sometimes kind of just best to see people, uh, like especially Steven, just like excited. It's usually a good sign. It's when you see them not being excited and kind of just like drudging through it, I and mean, you're like, oh, "There's something wrong." The only time I seen Steven in, I wouldn't call it a bad mood, um, or not his cheerful self, was at Gamescom 2018, after the whole my.com <laughs> thing. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the entire community just went to an uproar. <laughs> Yeah, but he was really, really. I mean, I don't think that faced him too much, uh, because he. Oh, that's oh, what the hell. Uh, because oh crap, hold on. Because I uh, gave him my goodbyes um, the same day he went to Amsterdam to talk to the head of Mitocom Europe. So I never like really recall Stephen being not cheerful, on stream at least. Right? I mean, yeah. I yeah. don't recall him not being truthful. He usually gets himself in the mood. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, do we want to move on to another topic, or is there something uh, about events that... Do you want to talk about events? Uh, yeah, Faisal, since you just joined Isol us, do you have anything to say about events? What do you mean? I am Stackerson. Oh, Stackerson, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take? I mean, um... I mean, they did say that they're going to try to make the events unique and not, not try to copy real-life events like Christmas, all these Easter things, and try to make it its own twist and vibe so it doesn't break a margin. Or at least that's what they claimed. Um, I think that's cool, I guess. Um, I never really had, a, a, like, a specific problems with them. Um... I'm just, I'm just like the only concern that I have if they made events like a daily event. I don't want a daily event. Why not? What's wrong with daily I mean, events? Because they usually like how MMORPGs do them is basically a chore that you have to do. Oh, do this. I'm, so you can I get, mean, that depends on. It also kind of loses its like. I don't know. I mean, it depends. Value, kind of. It's just always happening. So it's like, oh. The goblins are attacking again, like I mean, they did yesterday and the day before. I mean, it depends on you know. Before. It depends on you know what it is and what the um um what you get out of it. Sorry, I have my shoulders killing me. Uh, for example, if it's like um like seasonal daily events, you know, when it's like, hey, it's Christmas season, every day build a snowman, you know. That sort of thing. I mean, that's okay, but if it's like, like you said, if it's really daily, 24-7, then yes, that is an issue. I've got I've got so many weapons to use it on. Like, I, I can't just keep doing it. I'll run out of weapons, BCG. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, he posted Yokai before 
this power cosmetics in game no. collectibles you know what, tutorial you know, i'm picking a freaking topic i'm picking a topic okay. uh large boss fights there we go there we go large boss fights that's a topic i can get behind because that's what it's all about is fighting big ass monsters with your group and yeah yeah um actually on the topic did you guys enjoy the cinematic of that uh wyvern or the big dragon uh in the alpha tests which one the the one where you would like go in the dungeon at the very big like oh that uh, one the one boss. you the one you got the skin yeah. skin for uh through the a park battle pass yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i yeah that's the one that's, that's i do don't think i ever actually got to see cinematic? it cinematic I don't think I ever got to see it. Yeah, you, I, I, I fought in the other was... red dragon, but I don't think I actually fought the dragon in the volcano. And if I did, I never saw a cinematic. What, well, what other dragon? You mean the the frost dragon? Or the, the... No, the uh, there's the fire dragon up in the northwest. No, no, that, not that you one. had to get the amulet. Uh, that's the one I fought. That's what I'm oh, saying. Oh yeah, okay. You're talking oh, about the okay. volcano dragon. Yeah, that's in yeah, the, the volcano dragon. Yeah. yeah, I never got there, so I never saw that cinematic. I when they um so here's the thing when it comes to large boss fights right um the size of those dragons in game because those are supposed to be elder dragons uh mm -hmm. i think they're still too small like an elder dragon for me is is literally um a natural disaster so they need to really represent that like guild wars 2 even though those are scripted events Guild Wars 2 does a really good job when it comes to displaying, you know, what an Elder Dragon is supposed to be. And um, generally, large boss fights um, should have, should make you feel really small. Not just because of, you know, damage output, just, just should be, you know, like a really good large boss fight that I recall is uh world of warcraft uh fireland cataclysm firelands the ragnarok uh, hardcore boss fight scale size and difficulty was just on point and that's something to really really uh, in my opinion it's something really hard to pull off because i seen i seen uh large boss fights in other games and i'm like hey, this is just like you know uh, yeah, and I think they have to be careful. I don't think that you can just do a boss, which it basically is like any other NPC. Um, just scale it up and give it nasty abilities. You you almost have to design them differently. So because like if the it's just like a scaled up mob, it it's going to look weird when it moves around and like turns for mm. to attack different people. So they almost and like. Especially if there's like clipping issues or anything with it, um, yeah, it's almost something they have to design different tech for to make it look cool and feel cool. I mean, in terms of looking cool, I think uniqueness comes into play. Like, for example, Final Fantasy, like every boss is unique there, um, with, with its attacks, with its originality, with its uh, the way that the, like graphics that they have and i think they're really nice and cool I think um one of the like something that just comes to mind because when we're talking about large boss fights because that whole that whole raid the last raid in cataclysm um the the one where you fight dragon spine or whatever yeah dragon so where you fight deathwing right that that whole raid because you you fight on his back <clears throat> right you fight on his back and that just did that and then after that you fight the actual that thing and that thing was huge um that was a really well designed uh, um um boss fight but then like um if, if i think about it um scale wise skill was too um does a lot of things right to make yeah. the fights look epic but then if you get into the actual mechanics and systems of the individual fights um it's not as as well done as i would say world of warcraft boss fights like any and like if i think about it now any of the 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 elder dragon fights or the dragon fights 
within Guild Wars 2 that are open world. Um, they look cool, but they don't feel fun to play. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was trying mm. to say. It's like they they need to like design the bosses different than normal NPCs, so they actually um, deliver that like epic experience. But really quick question: Aren't though like most of the uh, fights that you described, BCG, most of them are instants, right? Or... Uh no. Um, the only instant fight that I know of is the one where you fight the the undead elder dragon. It's like okay. The, and then the the you fight. Um, uh, okay. The the one you fight in up north in in the the snow area that is not an elder dragon, and the other one I think that is an elder dragon. Um, but all the elder dragon fights are really scripted, and they don't feel like you know um. They don't feel how do I say, they, they don't feel fluid. Does that make sense? They don't feel hard. I, don't it's feel... been a while since I did them. I remember doing the uh, the forest one. Yeah, that was the last one I did. I remember like yeah, aesthetically it seemed really massive, but then like you actually got in the fight, it was like yeah. Yeah. It's... I feel, I feel. I mean, the, 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 I, the I, reason. Oh, sorry, Faisal. No, no, it's, it's okay. Uh, I was just going to add, like, I feel like the environment also plays a role of that certain boss. Like, we usually describe things as huge and big. Um, if we see something that's smaller next to it, the, um, if that makes sense. So yeah. the, the problem, the problem that the problem with with boss fights, big boss fights, right? Um. And that's the reason why the ones in Guild Wars 2 are scripted is because of the scale, right? Mm. In in World of Warcraft, um, the what happened now to the Faisal oh, return or uh, Yokai person. returned? Bye, Faisal. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Welcome you for Mike helping. Jefferson. Us. Nice seeing you. Yeah, Yokai is back. Um, no, the thing that I wanted to say was, um, Yokai, you're back. Okay, we have some respect. The thing that I wanted to say was um, the reason why the boss fights, the Elder Dragon, the large boss fights in Guild Wars 2 are scripted is because of the scale. Right? If you take out of the boss fights in boss arenas, they can be moved around because they're not as big. Right? So making a boss fight large in scale but also not uh, hard scripted um, that's something I would love for them to pull off. Well, okay. What I mean, I think you almost still want like a script to it. But what if the script is more dynamic location wise? Yeah. That's... So like, I guess one thing I keep on thinking about is like that whale. If the, I've never seen this happen, and I'm sorry for even recommending this, but the idea of like while you're fighting it, you jump down its throat, and maybe it throws you into an instance. Where you yeah, actually like have to do mechanics inside, kind of like Cthulhu. Yeah, um, I can see that. But you see, I would, I would love to see like, um, like a boss fight, an open world boss fight with an elder dragon that takes over an entire zone. Like you fight him in one spot, you know, then he goes to another spot, and then those you have to, like chase him around and. Exactly, and, and 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 each spot he has a different position because and just like I hate boss fights where the boss just stands still. Right? It might be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm like thinking about how you do that, and also with the open world mechanic like aspect. That is 100% what I was thinking about when I was bringing up the topic <clears throat> of large boss fights was l large open world boss fights. Yeah, I mean the dragon would fly around. I, I would imagine there are other more like like the tree beast or maybe the scorpion who would be a little bit more grounded. Yeah. Well, scorpion I guess could burrow and pop up other places. But... We we have examples of these like like the dragon from Arc Age is is an example of a large open world dragon boss fight. Yeah, uh, but that, that happens. You do that boss fight a couple of times and then it's just like you know tank and spank. Well, that's that's basically what most large open world boss fights like large open world boss fights generally don't have like crazy mechanics they're just like long-winded like like and this is one thing i think they're more entertaining to do less entertaining to watch they're, like but they're long and out they're long and winded 
just so I, I, for the sheer fact of like, oh, these people are taking taking on Dragon right now. These people are taking on Leviathan. These people are taking on fucking uh, Sandworm or uh, Giant Crab or what what have you. And uh, it's it's meant to be long winded as fuck, so people will come up behind you and contest it. Yeah, which I find stupid. I find that a stupid mechanic. A, s- a stupid way to design the boss fight. If I would have my choice to make a large boss fight for the open world, it would be a big-ass dragon, right? And then it would have um, a loot table of abilities, right? Let's say normal, a normal... Give me like a number what a normal world boss has like when it comes to abilities. Give me like a number. In terms Dying. of like... Mechanic nine, I, nine. Okay, he has nine abilities, right? And those nine abilities you can pretty much memorize, and you kind of know when they trigger, and you kind of know what what's going on, right? In my boss design, which is literally meant to to literally f- make the boss feel alive and not like something you can just you know memorize and then you know like any other boss fight, like kill. He has a loot table of abilities. Let's say like between twenty and thirty, right? And they he pair RNG. He picks some of them, right? And then they trigger, you know, at certain times when, you know, certain things and stuff like happen. And But it becomes unpredictable. And I feel like the more epic a boss gets, Elder Dragon, Titan, I don't know, Demi-Human, whatever, Demi-God, whatever you, you, you want to call it, as soon as a boss is meant to be, you know, a big-ass boss... It should not just be big, have a big HP pool. It should also be unpredictable. Because that makes it fun. That makes it like, oh crap. So we got to watch out what's going on. We got to be on our toes. We got to be like everybody. Very few even like scripted bosses you have it to where like they have a randomized like th- uh, a random. I don't know if any boss that has that. Yeah, you don't you don't really get that. And yeah, and there's reasons for that too. It's because like, like if you're wanting like a whole gigantic randomized loot, uh, a loot table of abilities to go through, and you're wanting to have like, like that's specialized stuff that you have to make for uh, tons of individual bosses to go through. It's just you do it once. More extre- like a, a lot of work on the developer side of things. I know, yeah, but it's 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 worth it at the end. But you're talking. But you just have to do it once. Like this isn't a one or done thing. Like most no, bosses- no. What, what you have to do is you have to design the system once, right? Then you put in another boss model. Well, no, each time you make a new ability. That you're yeah, but that's design. that's like making abilities for characters. You know, it's it- it's animation. Well, you don't. Make and then like if- a- go ahead, go ahead, Zach. Oh, I was just saying it's animations, and then like. Depending on what bosses need to be able to execute those animations, you have to like make up for each one, um, and then you have to like kind of factor that into the balance of abilities. Because like if some of these bosses get on farm, it's going to, it's going to be seen more like of, oh no, we got a boss that has it's like affixes or anything. It's like oh no, the boss is using this these abilities or it's using this pain in the butt or oh yay, it's using this ability instead of this. This is going to be easy. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, it's still, in my opinion, it's still better than something that is scripted. It, I can agree. Well, I guess I would, I guess I'm kind of think like, something that's similar to, more similar to, like, Lost Ark approach, where it's just, like, it's not scripted, but you know the abilities it uses, and it uses yeah. them in random combinations. And it's like, oh, fuck, he's now stunned me, and he's doing the ability that's going to freaking poop on me. So, yeah, I understand. I'm just saying it's you know, if you if you look at game a game like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, most abilities uh, that bosses use have been at least reused once or twice. They just look different, right? So even if you make a boss with a randomized uh, pool of abilities, this doesn't mean you're never going to use these abilities again for other bosses, right? You can add them, change them a little bit when it comes to look from it. And you know, add them to to the the uh, ability pool for another boss. I'm just, I'm I'm not saying that this is like the best thing ever or is gonna be you know not a pain in the ass. It would just make bosses feel more epic, makes them more reactive, makes them feel more alive. 
the larger scale of content you make that I so like we're talking large bosses in the open world right right now yeah. open world large scale bosses you're talking about a fuck ton of people yeah contesting that boss yeah abilities and skills the more people you add to it the less special abilities and skills are probably going to start feeling they're going to be doing large AOE uh, uh they're going to be doing large AOE based things to uh, to take care of the the sheer number of people that are doing it, sheer number of people are they're doing it um if we're world bosses not like 40 man like I, oh this is a 40 man raid boss kind of thing like like they're not made for a set number of people they're made to be uh, for like oh you have 100 people going going after and then maybe 100 more people are coming up behind them to pvp them so you have a bunch of so you have a bunch of skills and ability that people have to deal with while fought, while also contesting with pvp around them yeah why 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 is this a i mean i think thing? part of it i don't think you're supposed to be fighting a boss while you're being pvp like that Either a, you're supposed to be sneaky with it and you're not fighting the boss when no one's going to contest or you're hired someone to listen, keep people off you. PvPing during a boss fight is, is no excuse for me to having a boss fight that is pretty much a tank and spam. I'm not saying that. I agree. I'm not saying that. But I am I am saying that like making it extremely... Uh, doing it for open world ones where the, like numbers are uh, like, less of a factor or even like like 40 man raid ones. Where if it's open world, my microphone. We're talking about we're, we're talking about like making them extremely special, uh, uh, giving them mechanics and things like that that are that are, that are far like giving them a lot of them to pick from, right now because that's that's your that's your suggestion and also like if, if we're talking about let's say an elder dragon right, mm -hmm. if we're talking about some a boss fight that is that is categorized as an elder dragon. That thing should literally not be killable by normal means. I agree. Like uh, Faisal just just said, um, uh, make us use siege equipment to kill the boss. That it, it would literally it should literally be an event where more than forty people have to come together to kill an elder dragon, and an elder dragon should be. Um, a force of nature that can de-level and wipe out a node, at least in my opinion. That's part of the reasons why they're open. Uh, generally, why like open world bosses are considered. Uh, I, the, the thought process behind designing an open world boss, I, I think, uh, when, when you're making one, it's meant to have like large numbers of people doing it, so it feels like an, an entire army is going after this this monster, this boss yeah, that's yeah, terrorizing uh, the area. But but if 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 I can memorize the boss's ability within a couple of tries, you know, it's, I don't like, honestly, like for That's example, most raid bosses, I know, you generally I know. know, you generally learn their, uh, their, their mechanics. I know, and I know, I know. and I'm not saying that is a great system. I'm not saying it's a great system because even if you memorize mo in, not in most, in every hard raid encounter, it is one thing is memorizing their abilities, which is the easy thing. The other thing is just to have the right numbers. DPS wise, healing output wise, HP wise, and then sooner or later, if you're not, if if you can play the mechanics, the boss will die, right? But if you add a level of RNG or surprise to it, there is a more reactive nature to a boss fight that makes people actually have to react on a more in, in a more organic fashion to like, okay, so we know he's gonna, you know, at twenty five percent, he's gonna do this, he's gonna do that. Oh, he's now he's at seventy five percent, he's gonna do that. That then all becomes mechanically, which it's one point or another makes it literally boring. Like I never, after I cleared any raid boss on any difficulty, I maybe killed him like three or four more times because at that point it became literally a shore and really boring to me. But Even not, on the most reactive bosses, you generally learn what that will uh, what they're gonna do. I, I bosses that randomize stuff or like generally like I like have reactive I have reactive play. Like I would probably say Monster Hunter is the, like the best example of this. You generally learn what the boss like, what, the, what the monsters are gonna do, like their their patterns and stuff like this. Like, yeah. I, 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 everything. I don't Remove think the patterns. With a randomized, I think even with a randomized system, well, they don't they, they don't do them like super scriptedly. Like, like you can just like that like moves have telegraphs, and you can tell, generally tell when when a monster is going to do a move. So, like if they have an ability, they're going to do. People know like 
oh, uh, even if you have like a list of abilities they go down to, after that person's fought that boss like three times, uh, three or four times, they've probably seen a fair bit of its abilities. Hey, if I, you I, can learn on how the randomization's gone, and you're gonna learn what the I, I you're never gonna have an instance i don't think to where you're gonna have or every boss fight every time you fight this one boss it's gonna be unique still you know you know you know i don't know if you're, you're getting the point of what i'm trying to make is if you have a boss right that has nine abilities and they're all scripted and you can memorize all those abilities and you know what's gonna happen over and over again you know at one point it becomes boring but if you have a boss fight where the boss has a pool of 30 abilities which he picks nine from and he uses them you know randomly right and even you know you can memorize all this stuff right but that boss fight feels more organic more alive and more reactive than the one where everything is scripted to a freaking to a zero decibel and i think that is more reasonable for either like instanced or scripted uh, instanced or uh, instanced or smaller group bosses or uh yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. smaller group bosses than it is for an open world boss where they they have a whole lot of, uh, like if we don't have that for that for that smaller content stuff why are we going to have that for open how are we going to have that for open world because we're I talking think, we're talking we're, we're talking about large boss fights and if you give me a large boss fight that is scripted down where i just have to then it literally does not feel like me killing a freaking i don't know uh, a freaking turtle on the beach at some point this, the, the, if we're talking about large boss fights, this is, this is my opinion. Large boss fights in the open world have been such a misused, misused feature in every MMORPG, right? That that Ashes can come in here and actually make a large boss fight in the open world that feels like something that is like holy fucking crap, and not something people just go to fucking loot free loot. Because Monster Hunter, well, Monster Hunter bosses don't feel scripted i don't think no they, i never they, played i haven't monster played hunter. monster hunter in a long time but like i remember like farming bosses and especially i mean there's some bosses i like to fight and some i don't as great sword users anything that moves around a lot i hated but like the bigger ones always fun so i don't know what it is but i don't know if you necessarily need to randomize the abilities but definitely need to randomize their usage um so, oh, well, also just with, uh, like, uh, whatchamacallit, oh, Stark, uh, you know all the abilities, but sometimes the combinations and how you use them, uh, will throw you off, so it's not always the same fight. Yeah, and imagine that with a large boss, like a super large boss, with a lot of damage, a lot of <laughs> HP, and he has a pool of 30 abilities, and you're like, oh, holy crap, that is actually a boss. That's a lot of work you're asking developers to I do. I know, like, and, and, especially in a game, to where like majority they're, they're, of their fights okay. are large. Bo- are, listen, are, listen. Are, if you want to make, if you want to make a good game, saying that something is a lot of work is not an excuse for not pulling it off. If you want to make your large open world boss fights not feel like the crap we get in other games, from World of Warcraft all the way to Arc Age, right? Do something that is unique, and having something unique, like I just explained or I described, is not really like you do it right, and it makes an impact on the game experience. Because literally, if if I if I start if I see a boss, an open world boss, where it's like, okay, so the only hard thing on this boss is the, his large HP pool and the possibility that we might get uh, you know ganked from in the back. I'm already not bothering with that boss for the majority of my time. I'd probably go there to PvP, but I'm not going to bother fighting the boss. But if you make a boss that is literally a natural disaster, a boss where you really have to prepare and, you know, anything can happen, you like make him feel like an epic thing. Yes. I'm taking yeah. weeks off from work just to kill that boss. I'm not against what your goal is. I don't know if your it's method unrealistic. is necessary. It's, it's unrealistic. Well, no, 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 no. I think your goal is realistic. I don't know if your method... Your method is definitely... I don't know if your method is necessary, but I think your goal is realistic. The, the thing is, uh, this is, this is just me talking now when it comes to, to, to rating. This is why, um, like I explained, I clear a boss on any difficulty... Um, a couple times, and then for me that boss is on farm, 
And as soon as a boss for me is on farm as a raider, I'm like already bored with it, right? I, I don't really um, deal with it. Um, same thing with open world bosses. If 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 I cleared an open world boss a couple times, um, I only go there hoping that I can kill some people, right? And for me, one of the main issues with MMORPGs, especially in the raid large boss fight category, is that over the past eight years, developers have catered to uh, casuals and to people complaining that the boss fight is too hard way too much. There's enough content in an MMORPG to make everybody happy, but there should be certain elements in the NPC PvE area that are a real challenge even to dedicated hardcore or progress-oriented players. Right? Well, Warcraft tried it with a whole mythic system now, but they messed that up as well. Now everybody's just doing mythic dungeons. Um, uh, Lost Ark is trying to do it, but it's all like, you know, it, it's, it doesn't feel like you know the feeling you get when you go into a PvP arena? You know? Well, I mean, PvE has always kind of been a puzzle. Yeah. Maybe people that find cha a challenging hard a hard PvP uh, exciting. That like that's that that like, like those are uh, those are goals and accomplishments. Like like that's their top 100 inside PvP. Uh, that's that's their, that's, yeah, that's, their, that's their top 10 in PvP kind of thing. Like, like top of the leaderboards kind of stuff. Like people enjoy people people that do enjoy rating like enjoy being world first. We enjoy being uh, uh, being the person that like challenges like the harder raids and stuff like that. Um, world first, server first, yada yada yada. But a lot of what your uh, your, your your examples that you've been giving are stuff I, I, I stuff that's. The harder raids are generally ones that are the, the smaller instance, uh, like not even smaller. Yeah. Like you can have forty man or lower. But if we're talking about the large open world bosses, you're having like a hundred, like, hundreds of people go after like fifty to a hundred, uh, fifty to more people. Especially, like you want more people on there. Like you actually want it to make feel like a, like an MMO, like a lot, like a lot of people are fucking there. You want at least like a hundred, two hundred people. Yeah, and. I think you the, the the more people you have, like generally the bosses generally get dumbed down uh, in terms of intelligence because they're dealing with so many so many people they can't specialize on the one like that like that one individual person that's going off to fuck in the back line of like chug chug a potion or something like that, and then you also have like the more people you add to a fight generally the like that. the easier a, a, a boss will go down uh, you can't you can't necessarily 100 percent balance a boss around a hundred people i'm not saying you need to balance the boss i'm saying you need to make you need to you need to create bosses that don't feel like free loot all the time there have been open world bosses that don't give me feel like give me one example give me one example Leviathan was barely ever killed inside Arcage. okay i never really got into Arcage because i don't play pay to win mmorpg so And I think that, I don't know what the main reason behind that boss fight is, but if it was barely ever killed, then that is probably a boss fight that I enjoy. But I don't know what the difficulty was with that boss fight, so I cannot comment on that. But but no, I mean you have to use ships. Yeah, you have to be in ships. Like, so with Kraken and um, Leviathan, you had to be in ships. If you were, if we use um, uh, Lost Oasis, you have the giant crab and uh, the giant giant sandworm. Uh, those are also large boss fights. You're on your walkers the entire. Uh, the large boss fights in uh, Lost Oasis. You're on your your giant uh, walkers the entire time. Dragon, you're driving by with the in the cars with the, with the cannons on the back and stuff like that. Um, all I'm saying. Uh, all, on, I, all I'm saying is what. Oh, we can say I was going to ask, should large bosses actually be tanked? I don't know if they should be. No, they shouldn't. Or be tankable. No, they you, shouldn't be. I, th I would want to. I almost want to say that this. Sorry, this is almost a little tangenty, but I feel like large bosses, the tank needs to be more of a supportive role, like shields or damage, support or damage role. Yeah, I can see that. I and mean, like, I think the goal is people need to be avoiding mechanics, almost like something like Lost Ark. But I don't know. Sorry, that was just like a random, random tangent where I'm no, just no, thinking. You're right. My my problem if, is my problem. Okay, go ahead first. Oh, sorry. Go on. I had nothing else. My my problem is because we're talking about large boss fights. When I hear large boss fights, I instantly think of raiding. 
My main problem is that that rating has become so stale and casually friendly over the past eight years that it, it is really the most boring thing to me. I don't know if it's just casual or friendly. I think we've also just gotten better at it. Yeah, it's kind I, of like I the know. Whole thing I know. Where everyone's like, classic's going to be hard. I know, but and but the, the whole system, the whole idea of a raid boss, the whole idea of a large boss fight has never evolved. Right? There, there has nobody been, nobody has been there to try and redesign the core mechanics of such an engagement. Right? Just because it's an NPC doesn't necessarily mean you you, you have to beat it. Right, make it something that is like I don't know. If you want to play Counter Strike and you go up against the best Counter Strike team, you will never freaking win. Make make a raid boss or a large boss fight the same thing. Make it something people can strive to. Not don't make it free loot if you just have the right numbers. Which most large boss fights these days are. Which I find you know, um, yeah. I know, I know way too many old school MMORPG raiders that are like, the boss fight is just, you know, it's repetitive, it's boring. Make something new, make something that feels a little bit more organic, a little bit more, you know. Oh, yeah, I think that's one thing that I, I think they need to make sure also is the abilities and mechanics need to feel fun and also um, it'd be good if they make sense. And yeah. like contribute to the like the boss and the fight. What you just said, Staggerson, about tanks, I uh, tanks not having a a purpose in a uh, large boss fight, large open world bosses fights not being uh, shouldn't be able to be tanked. Is another like aspect of it. I, I we'll go going from more. I, I still talking about it, but going off on a little bit of a tangent. You have it to uh, I, I raids in general. The whole argument that BCG just brought up of raids being difficult. The reason people like Lost Ark is because, and why I think raids, the thing that makes raids fun is the mechanics. If you make a fight more like, I have to focus on the mechanics the boss does instead of like, I'm trying to, de like, it, it's just doing this thing, I'm just DPSing it down, then like, if, the ra if the mechanics are fun, the raid's fun. If I'm mm. at the focus, and, and, that, and that's, an, but like, the more like the like, I don't think you can really do that in a game. I, 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 we're talking about a bunch of aspects that don't support the holy trinity that's been in MMOs. You, yeah, like, like open world, open world, open world, large bosses, and I mechanic mean, heavy, me mechanic heavy game, uh, me mechanic heavy gameplay, all kind of uh, take away from. The aspect, uh, I, all those instances take away from the aspect of tankers being able to do stuff. I mean, you and can, so I think you also take you, away from, uh, like the Holy Trinity kind of like falls apart. I mean, you can combine open world large boss fights, the system that I described with um, scripted events where the tank role, like for example, if you trigger an event on any world in Ashes, right? And um, you now summoned an Elder Dragon, right? Uh -huh. So now you have uh, a couple of days to prepare three points on the map uh, that the Elder Dragon will attack, right? And um, there's a pool of abilities that he can use when he attacks. He is going to try to destroy, um, I don't know, the crystal or whatever. And you have to defend the crystal. You have to put up walls. You have to put up siege weapons. And um, the tank mechanic at that point, because it's an event take, gets taken away, all you have to you know worry about is um, negating damage to the crystal, and you know sieging down the the elder dragon. Like the elder dragon, maybe maybe he he does a you know fire breath. Now the tanks, everybody needs to gather at one spot. The tanks have to put up walls, or maybe he spawns. Uh, and I summon some other NPCs. Like, like that's a thing. You don't necessarily, for large scale boss fights, need um, uh, need a tank. What? Like, I know a bunch of raids where you don't need a tank. But that just kind of supports my entire fucking thing of like neutralizing the holy child. Like, lar like the like the more mechanics that we're talking about, like changing up the gameplay and stuff like that. You gray the lines a whole hell of a lot on the usefulness of some of some roles and 
the point of the Holy Trinity in, I mean, in, in, in a lot of these instances? I mean, it depends on how big we're talking. If it's a tank, if it's a large boss that can be tanked, you know. Should they be able to? And what is I? I what would a tank's role be? Uh, like number one, you're talking about I, I. I in your instance of like different points of stuff, we're talking about larger world bosses. You're probably like even if you were a like outside of a like large organized guilds, only being the only ones that get able to do this, and you're not having randoms in there. Like you're talking about a lot, a lot of like organizational type stuff, like yeah. being able to organize all the all the tanks, saying like, "Hey, you need to be on this. You need to be on this point." Um, what's wrong with that? It's just a lot of organization. Yeah, that, what's for wrong like with a that? whole bunch of randoms? Why? Why does why this this is this is like the, the thing that I'm trying to get at, and this is I think not coming across right. Why does a large boss fight, an open world boss, have to be freaking easy? I'm not saying it has to be easy. Yeah, but but if you have to la organize a large amount of group of people, if you have to organize a lot of stuff, that's part of the difficulty. And if you don't pull it off, then well, you're fucked. That's damn near impossible. You're not. I you're am not gonna organize, I disagree you're not so much. Gonna organize a, you're not going to organize a whole, a whole bunch of fucking randoms. I mean, I, you don't, then you don't organize a whole bunch of fucking randoms. You organize three large skills. Each of them does a 40-man group. You fucking coordinate with them what every group has to do and be done with it. Like, I organize 120 that people. That is an extremely... Two. That is an extra. Uh, you don't organize people in uh, a large group of people inside or a uh, planet side too very effectively. You, you give them you give them a point and tell them, "Hey, go." Uh, you oh, give them I, a, I, I an think you never really play planet side two, dude. I, I think, play planet side two. That's probably not too high level then, because I don't know what you're talking about. But if you're telling me that organizing three raid groups is such a fucking hard thing, and you know that's where the difficulty is, it's then, not uh, an extremely. I, I, it's actual three organized raid groups like that's not like actual guilds or talking talking to each other it's not a difficult thing to organize it's just the fact that like that's a specialized event thing and you're and you're and you're neutralizing that content from anybody else that's outside that's outside of those large uh, large guilds they can't do it like that like those, that's the who, only who says three they large can't, who says they it. can't do it if, a, if, a, if an open world boss attacks you're saying it's every... only content at that point that just, only... go ahead uh sorry <clears throat> Uh, there, sorry, there's a few points I wanted to make based off what you said. So one thing about the Trinity. So the Trinity does also kind of falls apart a little bit in PvP. So I don't think there's a problem with there being another content type where uh, you have to rethink your approach to, like, uh, class roles. Um, like, because, I mean, you still want tanks for smaller bosses and uh, group content. Uh, so having their a tier of PV content where tanks operate differently, I don't think is a problem. Um, as for this last argument, I think these kind of bosses are already supposed to be like the the top of the top kind of content. But also with those numbers required to do them, I think there's incentive for ra like guilds and raids to bring along or br not necessarily just like. Hey, you're a random scrub in a town. Let's bring you along. It's more like, hey, we need a lot of people. Let's recruit more people. I mean, you're not going to just have raid guilds of 40, 25, whatever people. It's you're going to have more. You want more people, so I think you'll be bringing more people. Yeah. But also, I don't think there's a problem with there being a tier of content that is like the upper of the upper. I there. I mean, it's kind of what Stevens always said, like. There will be content for everyone, but not all content's made for everyone. Yeah. All right, I think we got to call it quits there. We've been going over an hour. That was a good conversation. I like that one. I think we could probably continue it. I don't know if you want to continue it next time. I'm but, uh, I'd be done too. I'm done too. Okay. okay. And we need to come up with another cool ideas for the podcast. I'm not doing VR again for the foreseeable future. Oh, why, why not? You didn't like it? Ah, my cameraman is busy. That's why. <laughs> NDA with his whole freaking. I'm not doing that again. We can <laughs> do it again towards the summer, like, but not like within the next couple of weeks. All right. Uh, uh, what I want to do. Cool. What I want to do is I like, go back to like the 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 old version of the podcast where we had a shit ton of people on and just have a screaming fest. 
I want to try. We just yell at each other. Exactly. Yeah, we, I mean, I guess we yelled at each other last time. Yeah, I mean that wasn't really yelling. The, it was like arguing. I mean, like yelling. The more people you add, the like the more hectic it's gonna be, and you're not gonna have a lot of people. You're like you're gonna have, like you're gonna have people that. Uh, I so like, you you go through yeah. phases of wanting a more organized podcast, and then like the, like the more people you add, is gonna be less organized. And you're gonna definitely have people that are gonna. That no, are no. Not gonna... When I when I say I want to do organized, be like, okay, guys. So you know, there's a time, we need topics. You know, I do the YouTube stuff. Now we're gonna probably do the whole, uh, you know, audio thing. You know, that sort of stuff. But when it comes to actually the podcast and what we're doing in it, it's chaos. It's completely unscripted. We're not going. We're not. We're not changing any of that. That's podcast in general. I I, I feel like this podcast. I, 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 Show me a podcast where it's not just guys talk, uh, going uh, in Yo, a room Yoni, talking about topics. I literally, nobody besides you knows the topics to like maybe five minutes before we start. That is a lot. I, I post them. They're, they're in there for like I the never, entire week. I never read them. I never yeah, read them. That, that's on you though. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, it's not like we, we need to read them. It's like, oh, you bring up this topic. It's easy to talk about. Um. We'll, I think uh, it was Ogie B has been bringing up good points, and I just they like the VR. If we can get another cameraman temporarily, yeah, I think there's just... a lot of potential there, just because like we have a space we can interact in. So like, if there's ever a conversation where we could do stuff like draw or something like that, so you we can have... like visualize things, we can interact with each other more. I think there's a lot of potential there, especially with the popularity of like VR VTubers in general. Um, that's like almost taking it to the next level in yeah. a very easy way. Like I didn't have to set up a VR thing. I just downloaded a free game. Yeah. Uh, there are most of the maps, even the one we were using have a drawing thing. I would definitely take away the fucking props from fucking Faisal next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing a VR podcast. Why? <laughs> you don't have to deal with the overlays anymore. You didn't have to deal with an overlay in the in, the, in that. Shit, the, setting up the audio is a pain in the ass. The audio is completely. Maybe I. Maybe I need we to can, look into like we can we can make a map and then we could have like a screen. We can yeah. shows videos. Oh, you can do it. People could bring up videos themselves, uh, not people, just hey, if, Listen, if you want to get into making a whole freaking world, like you know the Ash of Creation discussion round freaking map. Go for it. If we can find a way to streamline that thing, I'd be down to do one VR podcast a month. That's the most. That's the freaking most. I If we can streamline it and make it look good. That's, that's the best I can do. All right. We're done for the day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will be back in two weeks um, with something. We're going to have something. I don't know what it is, but we're going to have something. Um, Till then, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you on the Ash of Creation Community Discord. Bye. Bye-bye. Peace.